Hey all. One of the key technologies we need to become familiar with as testers is SQL and SQL databases. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion that at some time in our testing career we'll work on a project that has a SQL database, whether that's uh, an application, you know, server application or a web application. There's probably going to be a server, uh, sorry, a SQL um, database in the background that we'll want to maybe add testing data to, um, check what data is present, manipulate the data in some way. And so it would be good if we had a way to have a practice environment on our own machine against which we could build out SQL queries and practice our SQL script. So what I'll do in this tutorial is show how we can put SQL Server on our machine, build a database and add some tables and then uh, perhaps in a second video how we might uh, start to do some queries. So I'll, we'll, we'll break it up into getting the facility to have uh, SQL databases and tables available to us on our local machine to play with and then perhaps some of the uh, the key SQL queries that we would want to run. So if we open a browser and go to Google and just search for SQL Server 2012, here we go, Express Edition. And the Express Edition, Express Edition is the free version. And if we look at this one here, this should be what we want to download. Let's wait for the computer to catch up. So here we go, SQL Server Express is a free version. And uh, we're not going to develop anything necessarily, but we will uh, practice queries. So we'll download this and we get a series of options here. And what we want is a SQL Server Express with tools. And we've got local DB, we're not actually interested in that. But uh, we want the SQL Server Express with tools. So let's go ahead and download that. You need to check if your machine is 32 bit or 64 bit. A quick way to do that is either to hit control panel and go to system. Obviously this is Windows 7 that I'm using and I can see here I've got the 64 bit operating system or you can run dxdiag, always a good one to know. So just put it in the search box. It's a little bit of a cheat this, it's not specific to the system but it will tell you uh, for a mind myself. Here we've got a 64 bit system so that's what I'll download I want the English version and hit download. Now if I remember this was yeah about a gig so it's going to take a while. So what I'll do, I'll pause the video here until this is fully downloaded. Now the download's complete all we've got to do is run this. Obviously I'm using Chrome here so I can just run it straight from the Chrome bar. That's fine. The overall installation takes quite a lot of time, so we'll probably again stop and start the video. But here we go, just preparing to run. What is this one? SQL Server 2012 with Service Pack 1 and SP1 Tools. Okay, so we just watch this go through the process here of setting up. Or preparing to set up. Okay, so we should be done with the browser. Let's see what comes up now. So you can see you probably need to give this I mean anything up to you know like half an hour to run 
overall. So here's the, the installation center window. We've got an option at the top here for a new SQL Server standalone installation or to add features. So this is what we want, a new SQL Server standalone installation. And again we get the dialog box that we'll become very familiar with. So we just saw a rule check there. I believe that is making sure that the system can actually install Server 2012, SQL Server 2012. So we accept the license terms. I'm not going to send usage data to Microsoft, so we'll leave that one. Click Next. And there's a couple of items here that it's, it's identified I don't have on the system. And so we need to include these SQL Server product updates. That makes sense. If we don't, it'll only cause problems. These knowledge base articles, by the way, you can go and read what this is. But generally speaking, just install these. So that's fine. We'll just click Next. And here we go. So as you can see, we're doing a bunch of downloads again. So what have we got? Downloading setup files. Not just those two but uh, that we checked before, but uh, a bunch of others as well uh, get included if you look at the, uh, the actual full install. But this is fine. So it's all straightforward. We're just following the wizard. We just do the download, click the exe file, and just leave everything as it is up to this point. Okay, so extracting setup files, because it's the download is now complete. And again, this, this step can take quite a while. So what I might do again is just stop the video and we'll come back when the extract of setup files is complete and the install of the setup files is complete. Now the installation of files is complete we get the feature selection window and we can see by clicking on each of these a description of what the feature is. So database engine services include the database engine core service for storing, processing and securing data. We definitely want that. SQL Server Replication, we're not going to replicate data from one database to another, so just for speed of installation I'm going to deselect that one. We've got Client Tools Connectivity, uh, again I'm not sure we need this for what we want, I mean the idea being we create some simple databases or we use the example database and we, we practice our SQL so includes components for communication between clients and servers you know maybe I can see some SQL queries where maybe this will be of use so I'm going to leave that one client tools backwards compatibility I probably think we need to leave that one client tools SDK so this is software development kit obviously for uh, container resources for programmers Again, I'm going to deselect that one because we're not necessarily going to do uh, anything that would use these tools. So the management tools basic so it includes management studio support for the database engine and SQL Server Express command line utility and so on. We definitely want that and the management tools complete so server profiler, database tuning advisor we probably don't need those let's just have a look reporting services analysis services I'm going to say deselect that one and just keep the basic tool set that should be okay SQL client connectivity SDK okay for database application development again I think we don't need that one and local DB we don't need to have this separate install of local DB we're going to go for uh, the SQL Server Express. So this looks like the settings that we need. We don't need to change any of this so we'll just hit next and again a whole bunch of stuff has to happen so we sit back and wait. 
All right. Now, when you do the installation, you can install. Yeah, you can do a number. So you can install a number of instances of a SQL Express. So the database. What we're going to do, you can have one default instance, and after that, you need to have named instances. So I'm only going to put one uh, installation on. So I'm going to go for the default instance. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And again, let's just let that do its thing. Okay. So we get two more, so service accounts, we get two options here, SQL Server, Database Engine. Okay, so this is set to automatic. It can be disabled or it can be a manual start of this service. I'm going to set this to automatic or leave it at automatic. And the SQL Server browser is if you want to be able to, I think from other machines, browse for uh, SQL servers you know, on a network. This is set to disabled and we'll leave it like that again I'm not going to do anything there in collation again this can stay as it is we want case insensitive so that's that's fine let's just go with that right so server configuration authentication mode so Windows authentication mode is uh, the user that you log in to Windows with, whether you want to use that or whether you want to go for a mix. If you go for a mix, you have to enter a password. So a SQL Server System Administrator account. We're just going to go for Windows Authentication. And just keep it simple. So we go in as Administrator. And okay, you could, if you had other accounts on this system, you could add those. But again, I don't have any other accounts, so I'll leave those. I'll leave that as it is. But I'll just go for Windows authentication. I'm not going to send error reports. Not bothered about any of that. So we go to installation now. So in theory, I've configured everything, all of the features, in a way that I think is correct, and we're off and again what I'll do I'll just pause it here and we'll come back when this is finished now the installation is complete and we can see here that all of the features that we selected have been successfully installed so if we close this off and this as well I believe we're done with this. I don't think there's anything else that we need to worry about on here. Okay, let's have a look down our new tools. So your server 2012. Oh, already had server 2008 there, that's fine. And then what we need to do is open SQL Server Management Studio. All right. So what we want to do now is connect to the, the database that we set up. In order to connect to uh, the server, so the database server on the system, we need to give the server name. Now, this machine I'm on is called Lab, and so this is the server name. I've got Windows Authentication, which I chose, instead of SQL Server uh, Authentication. And this was the user, again, that I, I chose when I was setting up the features. So I can choose to connect uh, with the server name of lab and here we go I've connected if I disconnect I can also just use a dot or in fact I can use 
localhost localhost should also work and that connects us to the SQL server installed on this server machine which obviously in this case is just this desktop that we're using now in terms of what databases are installed there's essentially nothing there's a standard uh, system database that sits under here um, but it's not really uh, you know this isn't obviously a working database it's not an example database there are if you go to the help file there's a link here for community projects and samples but unfortunately uh, there's the there's an adventure uh, or a database called the adventure database that's often used as an example but uh, it doesn't work I believe on the uh, the version we've got here um, the Express version it needs a full RTM but interestingly what you can do uh, even so because there is a database in place you can now click up here for new query and what you'll notice is this as you move these around move these uh, windows around you've got these docking areas here so if you dock this to here you get some space here and obviously what you can do is start putting uh, basic queries in from well, probably this this one and if you hit F5 here we go uh, find the little drag area we can get results back so the point being that we can we can already start to practice our SQL queries but clearly what we can do now we can go build a table a proper sorry uh, you know start adding our own uh, tables adding our own data to those tables as if it was a test table maybe doing start doing joins and so on so in the second video we'll have a look at some basic SQL queries maybe we'll again we'll build this example table out and we'll run some queries so that's that that's how to get a SQL Server Express 2012 version installed on your machine and so that we can start then practicing our SQL and uh, so that when we get you know into a live situation we've got uh, some SQL skills there that we can apply